about Denmark, no. right? Horrible. <laughs> I actually literally know nothing about Denmark at all. So people were like coming up to me and, uh, and complaining. I said that Denmark was bad previously. And I know absolutely nothing about Denmark. So I can't really say it's bad, but it's, it still sounds bad. <laughs> so this is a, uh, so we're doing uh, stories and lessons learned on the path to success. So I'm gonna pronounce all your names just so I can do it. Uh, Thor Friedrichsen. Vala Hardsdaltier. <laughs> Great. Cecilia, oh God. Vil, Viljam's daughter, Katjan and Katjan Olafsson. Is that right? Is that good? Excellent. Is that a good accent? <laughs> Thank you. It's been mangled worse before. So I want you guys to go along one by one, introduce yourselves, introduce yourselves to me and to the audience. Uh, we're going to treat this sort of like a interview that we would do uh, for the site for TechCrunch. So we're going to do sort of a quick back and forth. We're going to discuss what you guys do here and, and how you got to be so successful, <laughs> despite being yeah. nice. And <laughs> <laughs> so go for it. So if I start, I mean, I guess, first of all, um, I wasn't notified this is, was, you know, uh, should revolve around success, I think, at least for myself and I guess many of us. Uh, we've been lucky enough to maybe have the first few steps towards uh, success, uh, but hopefully we'll see real success later down the line. So for myself, uh, personally, I just moved back to Iceland uh, about a year ago uh, after spending eight years in Boston and New York uh, for studying up in Boston and then um, then doing uh, pretty heavy new business development or entrepreneurial business development for a big media giant uh, called Bertelsmann, which is a privately held uh, third biggest media uh, corporation in the world. Uh, and I was basically focusing on driving alternative revenue streams and building new businesses for three of their portfolio companies, um, Fremantle Media and TV production. Uh, they do a lot of scripted TV, but they are world leaders in format TV too. They own the idols, the Got Talent, uh, all of those formats that you've probably heard of. Uh, I worked a lot with Sony BMG, Global Digital uh, Business Group of Sony BMG Music, which is also one of these uh, old media businesses that has seen quite a few challenges in the last decade or so, uh, significant challenges to their business, uh, to, to their standard way of doing business, let's say. Uh, and also the third company I worked a lot with was Random House, another portfolio company, uh, which is also going through uh, significant changes on the product side, on the business uh, side. To be able to move back home, like most Icelanders end up doing, I guess, that have spent significant time abroad, uh, wanting to bring my teenagers to Iceland and, uh, and have them grow up to be uh, Icelanders but not New Yorkers, uh, I set up my own small venture development company to start doing for myself what I was doing for Bertelsmann before. Uh, that is to say, hopefully creating a series of new startups. Um, I have one now up and running in New York with 12 employees. Um, just closed funding and got the money in the bank last week. Uh, hopefully TechCrunch will write about it in the next couple of weeks when we announce it, but <laughs> one significant New York fund uh, and one significant San Francisco fund taking part. Uh, we hope to revolutionize some parts of our digital lives. Uh, here in Iceland, I've got in, uh, been involved in a couple of startups. Uh, I'm invested in and on the board of Data Market, which is one of our rock stars, or hopeful, hopeful rock stars in the startup world in Iceland. Uh, and I've been lucky enough to invest with a small, uh, with an investment boutique here called Other Capital in a few more, uh, more uh, advanced tech companies also, um, and a bunch of NGOs, I guess, also, non-profit stuff here. So just trying to have fun. Okay, and just to make it clear, if you want to be written about in TechCrunch, you have to supply me with a live puffin. <laughs> Excellent. I don't know if you guys, Excellent. like a living, a real one, so I can I, take it back with me. Well, so I don't, we have to figure out how to get it in the bag and all kinds of other stuff, but FedEx just it. to think about it. If you want to FedEx it or if you want to bring it over, I need as many as possible. So. <laughs> Go for it. Mm -hmm. Yes, hi. I am Thorsted Fridriksson. I'm the founder and CEO of Plain Vanilla Games. So uh, my background, why did I start this? I think that when I returned from abroad uh, doing my studies in the UK, uh, like in 2010 or something, 
I really, you know, I, I came here where there was a bit of a turmoil in the Icelandic economy, and I really wanted to, you know, do something that was, you know, not limited to Iceland only, but to do, start a company basically that was more global. So I started Play Manila Games what, in 2010 here back in Iceland. And I was, you know, incredibly sure that we had, we had some great ideas to make uh, games on mobile devices uh, for kids mainly. And I was absolutely 100% sure that our ideas and what we were going to do was going to just blow everyone away. And we, we spent about a year making a children's franchise, uh, our first game that was called The Mookies. And uh, we launched it, and we, we spent, I, I can't even imagine all the love and, 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 and sweat that went into that product. And we launched that product, uh, what, fall 2011. And we got great publishers, and we were, we were very excited about what was going to happen and how we were going to conquer the world. Uh, and we launched it, and it was a miserable failure. And yeah, you can laugh, it's, it's okay, it's, <laughs> it's funny now. Uh, no, it wasn't a miserable failure. We, we just, we, we launched it and it was, we, we kind of learned the hard way of how, just how hard it is to compete on the global market. I think we were number one in Iceland app store for like, you know, three months in consecutively. <laughs> but there so were we, like we three did conquer Iceland, too, yeah, we right? did, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it didn't really cut it. So about a year ago, like last year, the beginning of, of last year, we were at this threshold where we had this product, you know, we were like a team of, of only three people then. And we, it wasn't working out, we weren't getting the, 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 the revenues we needed to continue the company. So we kind of just like, uh, you know, went under the, uh, the skin, like you say in Icelandic. <laughs> and, and we had to come up with a new, really? yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I guess you <laughs> It's, uh, and like we kind of just had the skin, to, or how does that work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like just fish skin. I'll, 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 I'll explain it to you. Later. Okay, good. Yeah. So uh, we just had to come up with something new. So basically, what we did about a year ago, roughly a year ago, we came up with a new idea to make a grand idea again to make a, a new kind of social network, a social network that kind of revolved around people's interests, a social network that was mobile and allowed people to connect to new people and get to know new people. And we called this uh, platform QuizUp. So it was hard for us to basically, you know, do that on our own. So we decided to move the company to San Francisco. That's what we did about a year ago. And that last year has just been a total fairy tale, actually. So we've, uh, we showed this to investors in the US. They, they liked it, which was, you know, they didn't like it at first. It was kind of a, it was not easy um, to say, say it like that. But in the end, now we have completed two series of funding in the US, mainly in China. And we've grown in about a year from being three people to 17 people now, and we're just full on uh, developing the next Facebook. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, a new, a, new, a new social platform, but we're very excited. But it was, that's what we're doing. That's what Play Manila is doing now. And we are still based in Iceland. And yeah, we're launching our product sometimes this fall. All right, that's me. Vala? Yeah, hi, I'm Vala. Uh, Cecily and I have been working together for the last five years, I think. We started out back in 2008 when we did a board game. It's a good way to start to be an entrepreneur here in Iceland. Everybody knows the CCP story. Uh, then after the board game, it was quite a success, sold a lot. Uh, we really wanted to build our own startup, but we didn't thought we necessarily had the right experience. So then we got the idea to make a documentary about entrepreneurs to learn for ourselves. Uh, I think we have TechCrunch, everything to blame about this documentary because actually in the beginning we were just thinking about doing some web series, but then TechCrunch wrote an article about the movie and all of a sudden it blew in our faces like everybody wanted to see this movie we hadn't even finished. So then we had to go and shoot it again. So in the end, Sorry, it took yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. Tech effect. Uh, it took us, I think, three or four years to get it out there after the TechCrunch built up the initial, like everybody wants to see it. Uh, yeah, it came out last year. It has uh, been shown in all of the continents in like in so many countries. I don't ha even have the count of all the countries it has been screened in and now it's going to so many universities, uh, at the same time we made the movie, we uh, built our own startup, 
And we have been working on so many projects along with the movie. So that's kind of the mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. Okay, so I'm Cecilia. I have maybe nothing more to add to that because this is also my story. <laughs> But uh, yes, but it has been actually amazing with our documentary and just to see like the interest in the uh, all over the world, like in entrepreneurship. And we get like tons of emails every day and have uh, all this interest in the screenings and everything. And we kind of uh, want to build from there because we actually travel a lot because of the movie. We have been traveling a lot in mostly Europe, Eastern Europe. And we have we have had like a good chance to see like different um, entrepreneur ecosystem, and that's uh, like a great experience because we are having screenings. There are maybe 400, 600 people showing up just for our screening, and that and all of these people are like the key people in the um, entrepreneurship uh, sector in each country. So that has actually been like an amazing experience for us also to learn and uh, we have plans to like build from that uh, to build on the start to kids brand because uh, like I'm always like meeting random people that like are talking about the start to kids the movie and they don't even know that we, we made it and that's always uh, really fun uh, yeah so that's kind of the the plan to build on these uh, networks like we have been traveling and uh, and do more with the start to get spread from there. So more about that later. <laughs> okay. So I think specifically we wanted to talk about what, how do you guys define success? And I think Thor, you might be the first one to talk about this simply because you failed so miserably. Um, <laughs> how do you define success in this market and then in the worldwide market? How what how can a entrepreneur out here uh, define success for themselves, especially with all you've experienced. You, you, built, you built a great product, it mm -hmm. didn't work, and then you built another product that worked really well. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what does that mean to be a success? What does that mean mm -hmm. for any, all you guys? And we'll just start with you and you can run down, down the line. So maybe it shouldn't be like that, but in the startup world, uh, uh, getting funding is one uh, like measure of success, although it shouldn't be like that, of course. But when you're like in a big group of entrepreneurs and you see all these startups, this, I feel like you know, uh, st you know, entrepreneurs are very obsessed with this to begin with, and you know, there's a reason for it. Of course, you do need money to be able to do something, but I mean, that's not enough. You know, getting someone else's money that they believe in you is not success. So you have to be able to create value with that money, and in the end, of course, uh, success will be measured measure uh, the way how you, how you can take other people's money and, and create value from that and give them more. That would be the typical answer. Uh, for me, if I, if I take the example with the Mookies, for example, uh, it was a game that we sold on, on the App Store. And we didn't sell that well, obviously. Uh, and that was based definitely not a success story. However, what we did, when, once we, once we uh, you know, saw that the sales were declining and we weren't going to make any real money of it, we, you know, we gave it away for free. We just decided, hey, we're not, we, we spent like a whole year really pouring our hearts into that product. And it's beautiful. The kids love it. It just didn't penetrate the market. So what you're going to do instead, we're just going to, you know, do a press release. We're going to give it for free. And what happened then is that, you know, it was downloaded. It, it actually got, a, finally, a lot of press because of that, because it was well-reviewed and all. And I think we got like, you know, like million downloads or something uh, of the movies. You know, a lot of people in China and all over the world are playing it. And that's another kind of success. I don't know why, but it, it kind of made me feel really successful at that time when we were going bankrupt. But just knowing that mm -hmm. there were like a million people or kids playing with the product you did, that's, that's like a, more of an emotional success. So I guess there are, there are two types of success when you're, when you're doing, when you're an entrepreneur. It's the financial one, really, making money, and then that's like impacting other people. And that's, that's beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. What we learned, uh, especially from interviewing all the entrepreneurs, the successful entrepreneurs from the movie, uh, they didn't focus on like the money part. They were really, really focused about the user. Mm -hmm. uh, like having engaged users uh, was everything to them. And uh, like I, we have experienced it as well, like people watching our film, 
talking about it to us, uh, it's amazing. And like we have so many stories, especially in the film, where people like who have built stuff like Dropbox or SoundCloud or something, where they were telling us like just. For example, take for example, Drew Houston, the founder of Dropbox, he told us, like, uh, I told him that my mom used Dropbox, and he was, like, blown away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, some older woman in Iceland is using this. Okay, this is it's definitely a success. So. <laughs> no, I agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think, like, it's different. And it sometimes irritates me a little bit about uh, the big startup game. You know, like you get funding and you're not maybe really successful until the ex exit. Mm -hmm. And maybe I think like in all this discussion, like we're not talking about maybe just companies that are like good companies, make a lot of money, maybe doing something for the, like the society at the same time or something. And I was like, I've been actually going back and forth with Sol uh, because uh, we got to think about this all, like why are we doing this just in the process of making the movie? Uh, and I met like with one of the most successful people in the world, often in the Wally, and I've never seen <laughs> such like a lonely people, uh, or maybe just depressed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> so, so like I've been like going back and forth with this all. Uh, so I, I mean, it's probably like individually what's what's success, but it's maybe like I think maybe for me now getting older, 27 now, <laughs> maybe more like some kind of balance. Um, um, and also like it may be like for me now, like I've been doing this since I graduated from the, from the university, uh, probably like four years or something. And I think like in terms of just what I've learned, like we, we have, I've traveled like all over, I met with like all the successful people and learned from them and everything. I've done like, we've done iPhone apps, a lot of web apps, uh, documentary board game and everything. So that's, I mean, I mean, it's maybe not like huge successes, like exits or anything, but for me, like now and just uh, all this experience, like for me, it's kind of success for now, but of course it's not enough, you know, it's just the beginning. Um, yeah, so. I think I wanted to add, and this helps people understand where I come from in terms of how this goes together, and I'll get to you in a second. Um, TechCrunch, for example, I, I would equate what we do at TechCrunch to sort of coverage of the publishing industry. So you have the publishing industry that has these big blockbuster books that come out, and we write about, and they write about that Stephen King got $2 million for his book, and whoever, some, some other author got 100000 that sort of thing. And they write about those big guys, but then they also write about the, the people who are doing it just for what you said. Almost, it's, it's, not, it's not for pleasure, it's, it's you want to get your product out there and we try to help those guys as well. So you have this sort of dichotomy in the, uh, in the startup coverage industry, I guess the startup journalism, uh, where the big news is obviously that Twitter bought, I don't know, the COD social network. Um, <laughs> but the real news is that somebody's trying to do something cool. So what are you guys trying to do cool? Personally, <laughs> I'm trying to build uh, uh, business that I guess what what I would think cool to be part of uh, ties into what I guess what I would define as the as the real success for for the scene here that you asked about before and that I'd be I'd love to be a part of and that is <clears throat> not only uh, you know uh, floating up uh, or filtering for brilliant ideas that we have floating around in Iceland a bunch of them uh, not only turning those ideas into uh, businesses and viable businesses, not only getting funding uh, and bringing a product to the market, and not even like having a successful exit. What I would love for us to see here, at least one example of in my lifetime, is for us to raise in Iceland a startup that will <coughs> revolutionize something, they will actually revolutionize an existing business, or preferably create a brand new industry on its own. Uh, and for, for Iceland as an as a ecosystem uh, for entrepreneurs and startups, I think that would be the ultimate success that I would be hoping for. Um, currently, I'm working on that success in New York uh, with my company there, uh, hopefully at some point here in Iceland too. I just hope back. that just hope that at least you know that either one of them will 
get somewhere Reykjavik close. Reykjavik can be the new Williamsburg. I think <laughs> the plan. <laughs> The plan. So like we have hipsters. Yeah, you do. <laughs> a few. Quite a lot. They're all out there. I see them. We have latte drinking hipsters. Yeah. So let's do this. Why don't we say, if you're trying to give advice to someone who's just starting out and is trying to escape sort of the black, the, the, the pull that their home country has. And every, every time I travel, I always see the same thing, that how do we escape? How do we talk to the international press? How do we talk to investors? How do we... How do we get attention outside of our little, our little hut that we live in. Um, how did you guys do it? How did you guys get the attention? And you guys obviously used us as a crutch. <laughs> so that's fine. That's fine. That's, that's right in the be beginning, though. <laughs> we used Iceland a lot. Iceland is a good selling point. Like, we talk to people. We are two girls from Iceland. Can we meet with you? Talk about how awesome you are. That was good. <laughs> I, I, I have, I have a right. total opposite like, experience. I, I actually, when I'm abroad, I think that, you know... I think the key two words, there were two girls from Iceland. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. I think That's two dudes from Iceland it sounds might horrible. Be the, the thing there. But then another thing that we used was like... Uh, the US love Europe and the Europe love US. We used that a lot. After we we had been in the US interviewing people there. We went to Europe, and everybody wanted to meet with us because we had met with the people in the US already. But then we used the same strategy in, in the US, and it actually worked. <laughs> like, they snob for like, European c companies, so that worked, that worked out as well. So what's the <laughs> bottom line? What's your advice to the, to the entrepreneur? What's you our just advice? be two girls from Iceland? <laughs> no, no, no. Have, no. A, have a female founder, definitely no. Uh, I think my advice would be, like, use Iceland as an opportunity. This is a small country. You have to think globally. Like, it's not a country like uh, Poland, for example, where it's like a million people you can sell to. Like, you have to think globally if you're in Iceland. So just use it as an opportunity. Okay, Thor, you wanted to add? Yeah, well, yeah, like we said, I, I don't know. I, we've talked about this before, you know, I don't know if you, you can, but whether it makes a difference being a girl when getting someone's attention, because it's an incredibly <laughs> male-dominated, you know, especially the, the funding of the, or the VC part is a, is a very male-dominated industry. I don't know. My, my story was that, you know, I had an incredibly hard time getting meetings to begin with, even though I was from Iceland, and I had to get, like, very innovative, you know, in, in my efforts to try to, to meet the right people at the right time. And it almost borders on stalking. So, so when I know really... I, Do you have any examples when, when of I stalking? Because that sounds creepy. <laughs> yeah, it does. Can, can, you it say, can you tell us the Saka story? It's a good story. Oh, yeah, well... Yeah. Oh, Saka? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I actually, when I was doing my studies in, in Oxford, uh, uh, a bunch of VCs from, from, from the Silicon Valley came and met with us, you know, in, in like this mentoring kind of mode. And I, I, like, I was w w talking with, with Chris Saka, which is a, a very notable you know, VC. I think he was the first VC I ever met in, in real time. And I was just awed, you know, saw his, I was just like a, a student by then. And, and one, like, when I was preparing to go to, to, to San Francisco you know, to get funding, I always thought like, yeah, and then I have you know, Chris Saka's email. And you know, <laughs> like, I met him like three years ago, and he really liked me. And you know, he's going he's gonna to be my key into the whole scene. <laughs> Which was just a gross misunderstanding on my part, and, and, and so so I just remember I, I, I did this, you know, I, when I came to, to San Francisco and we didn't know anyone there. I, I started by emailing some of the guys I met there, like Biz Stone, the founder of Twitter, and and and, and Chris Saka, and and we just waited and I never got a reply, of course, and we had to use alternative methods to, to get there. However, like later on, once we had got the funding and we got some connections there, I did meet with them, you know, and then. That, that, that just, it just, like in San Francisco, for example, in the U.S. in general, you know, it's, you have to, you have to start by getting to know the, the smaller players, and it's just kind of like a network. You have to have them introduce to the, the level above. You can't really cut levels that easily. You can't just, even though you met Saka once, you can't call, send him an email and go <laughs> like, hey, Saka, I'm the guy from Iceland, remember the Viking, just... It doesn't, doesn't work like that. <laughs> However, right now we have like a, 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 an executive meeting in our company, which we call the SACA meeting. <laughs> and, and we have that every Tuesday. So that's, that's, that's an in-house joke for us. Okay. <laughs> well, you already escaped, I think. But how do you... Well, I think, I mean, uh, pr probably not typical or 
not sure if I can give advice to those that start out here because, I mean, obviously I spent a lot of time in the U.S. Uh, I, I could pull on my uh, business school network, uh, graduating from Harvard Business School. There's a huge, huge network, very strong, uh, with people in many high places in this business as in so many others. So that definitely helped and then have, uh, you know, a, a pretty successful uh, corporate career in New York also for many years. You build your network. Uh, but I think still, even if you have that to pull on, uh, the same fundamentals uh, uh, need to be in place, whether you're sitting there with that network or you're sitting in Iceland, knowing mainly Icelanders, you need to do something really impressive. You need to do something noteworthy. You have to have a story to tell. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, doors will open. I will also just recommend make a documentary or like build a website where you interview people because it's the best way to approach people. Yeah. Yeah. But I agree with Karta and it's all about the story. I mean, I, I found out quite quickly when going abroad that you had to, you had to have like a, a good story. Even I made up one, I'm, you know, it's, <laughs> but it's, it's, you have to have the icebreaker to, to be interesting, to be cut above the others and... and mm -hmm. That's, well, I think that's we, we ran a story about you guys, and I love the story because yeah. it was—it's the underdog story. It's yeah. the, yeah. and America loves the underdog. They it's want all made up, though. You know, it just whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> no, I know. It's, still, I know. Yeah. it's all papers. <laughs> so okay, we got. Thanks. So the, here's your advice, people. So yeah. you have to be two girls. No. You have to. I have uh, some. You have to. Uh, you have to stalk Chris Saka. Yeah. You could physically just give him like a shirt. He really likes these Western shirts. So if you give him one of those. And you also have to go to Harvard. So that's two girls <laughs> from Harvard. Uh, two Western girls with a colorful, yeah, one of those colorful story. With Western <laughs> no, I, I, I think also, like, of course, it depends on what you're doing here, like, in what kind of business you want to be, be in. Like, but I think, like, for Iceland, and it was really opportune, it was really important for us, is because when you live in an Iceland, in an island with only 300,000 people, it's really, really limited what you see. And uh, I was just mentoring at the university in Reykjavik like two weeks ago or something. And still there, there were a lot of like good ideas, but still they were always thinking about Iceland. And I was just like, really? There's like a market with 300,000 people. And yeah, so I think like it's really, really good just to travel, just before you uh, do anything, just to see like the round of the world and see like how people are doing it differently and how maybe there's something working in Iceland that's like really, really good and you could maybe implement that somewhere else. Um, and also, uh, we have been doing a lot of traveling because of the movie, l like I said. And in Eastern Europe, they're always talking about Silicon Valley. Like, they want to drink, like, the same Kool-Aid. And, and it's kind of that way to here. But I think, like, every country has its, like, advantages and disadvantages. Like, there, they have, a, like, a lot of uh, cheap engineering. And in Silicon Valley, you can't hire people. And it's really, really expensive. So I don't necessarily think like the best ideas will come from Silicon Valley anymore, because I go there and it's just like a, like a big bubble. Like there's so much money and a lot of the like you mentioned maybe before. I've done a social app like before and everything, but like it's more like they're solving luxury problems, mostly mostly like problems that uh, like the rest of the world doesn't have. So uh, it kind of will be <laughs> interesting like to see where like the good ideas like come next from but that's maybe a, another chapter because in America like you really know how to market and like in Silicon Valley it's just like a machine that works all this experience all the funds all the funds and everything uh, so that's also what's missing here in Iceland. Maybe, you know, like we have been having, we're always having the discussion with the fundings and everything. But I think we should also just uh, talk about in international marketing uh, because there's, uh, there's almost no experience here in it. Like we can, like there's a lot of creativity. We can make the products and everything, but we don't know how to get it like into the big market. And that's like a big problem. And also now, like we have, because I have the word, I'm just speaking yeah, here. I'm really <laughs> passionate about this. We had another two <laughs> hours. <Yeah. laughs> because like it's good maybe to have some grants and everything, but still at the same time, like when we are relying on the grants, 
like we are walking slower than other people in like in for in for example Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. and this times uh, like uh, this timeline it matters a lot when you are uh, competing with international companies and you're always doing that online mm -hmm. of course if you're thinking globally, and so I think like you're in Iceland like it takes us so much time, you know to do like to like it took us like we have done mobile apps it took us so much time just like maybe to know how to do it, and then just to kind of know how maybe to market it or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, pretty bad, like how much time it takes. I think that time, if I might add to that, uh, we Icelanders really pride ourselves in being small and agile and flexible, and that we can you know, beat the, the, the other countries because we are, we are so small that because of, our, our, uh, because of that, we can act faster. However, when it comes to you know startups and, and especially funding, uh, that's really not the case. You know, in the Icelandic investment environment, for example, usually it takes months and all sorts of due diligence just to get through a, a seed funding stage in in Iceland. Uh, whereas, for example, in the U.S., where where we did our initial seed round, you know, most people that we talked to, they they answered us in the meeting, uh, and then they had. Uh, deposited the money or the, the funds to our bank account the day after. And I, I know it's, these are not institutions, these are angels, but just the speed of, of, of having a, a startup where you can pitch your idea all day long and then just getting the funds almost instantaneously, I mean, they, that must be an advantage for the companies being there. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's something we need to think about. I think I wanted to add, well, just before I forget, I wanted to add a story about Michael Arrington and stalkers. So I think these, some guys from Denmark, I think they were from Danish. <laughs> they actually came to his house one morning, and Mike, Mike invites everybody to his house, or he used to. And I was, and they came in and they walked into his bedroom while he was still sleeping, and they brought him coffee in his bedroom, because he left his door open, because he's kind of a weirdo. And uh, so yeah, that's one way not to do it. <laughs> that sounds like, it sounds like you avoided just the... the no, I actually, like my, you, my you the, the, the biggest stalking story for mine was actually the one that I think was a, a pivotal point in the, the fundraising point. And that was when I stalked a, a senior uh, partner at Sequoia Capital. At, you know, in retrospect, it was a horrible idea, but it, in the end, it, you know, it did work. What happened actually is that, you know, uh, we have a friend in Iceland that's quite, quite successful and amazing person, David Halkesson, who is the, the CEO of, of Unity, it's, which is a pretty big, you know, game platform company in, in San Francisco. So just like moments after I arrived in San Francisco, I, I called him up, I didn't know him before, and I showed him what we were doing, and, and he kind of liked it, and, and he said, like, yeah, you, sh you should really talk to Sequoia. And I was like, ooh, you know, Sequoia is kind of like a, a big brand name in the, in the VC business. And he said, like, you know, Thor, I, I, can, I can arrange a meeting. And I was like, really? That's, that's, that's great. I was very grateful for him because I thought, now the Icelanders are really, you know, sticking together. And he asked me to come to his offices at, like, you know, 5 o'clock or something the next Friday. And I got really stressed about it. I had never seen a real, you know, VC, and I was just jumping into the deep end of a, of a pool. No, really. I mean, that's, you know, we're just... You had Matt Saka. I had Matt Saka, yeah, that's right, with bad yeah. results, you know, obviously. So I was getting really ready and, like, thinking about what to say and getting my deck ready and all, and, and then I come to, to David's offices, and, and I, I, he, he tells me to come, come into the boardroom, and I'm, I'm saying, like, okay, so when is, when is this partner at Sequoia coming? And then David said, like, yeah, he's just coming, like, in half an hour. And I was like, okay. So, so David, what did you tell him about me? You know, did you, what kind of intro did you do? And then David told me, intro? No, no, he doesn't know you're here. <laughs> I was like, what, what do you mean? You know, it's, 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 you, you can never get a meeting with a guy like that. I've, I've been waiting for two weeks myself. But the thing is, when he comes into the boardroom, you know, we're gonna be like pretending that we're just finishing a meeting, and then I'm gonna introduce you, and then you try to pitch him the idea, you know, on your way out of the door. <laughs> so. <laughs> and I was like, really, so, you know, <laughs> <laughs> bad enough that I was like, you know, just sweating and, and really yeah. stressed about meeting my first real VC. So I was meeting this senior partner at, so I wait and I just get more stressed about it, of course. And then that, that man comes in, I'm not going to say his name, you know, just for sake of his privacy. <laughs> and, and he comes into the door and he's like a very stern looking guy. And I get all stressed up. He looks, he looks at David, says David, and then he looks at me and with this kind of 
who is this person <laughs> kind of look in his face? And I like, you know, stand up and I, I shake his hand and he just goes like this and says like, David, who is this? And then David actually gets stressed himself because he didn't want to, you know, oh, he's just my, my friend from, from Iceland. He's just leaving and, 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 you know, actually he has a good idea. Maybe, Thor, can you just tell him very briefly about it? <laughs> and the Sequoia guy guys goes like, is this why you called me in, David? <laughs> and, and, and it's just get this really tense moment there. And actually, and this is not a joke, I put my jacket, because I had a jacket on, I put it on the, uh, at the floor next to my chair. And we're all standing up there. And he looks at me. And he looks at my jacket, and I'm, I'm just still trying to like, introduce myself to him. And he says, like, whose jacket is that? <laughs> and I, he actually said it like that. He was like this horribly intimidating guy. And I go, like, this is my, my, my jacket? <laughs> and then he says, like, you don't treat clothes like that. <laughs> and this is just the worst start of a meeting in the history of, of fundraising, and I, I'm telling you. And I'm like scrambling to get my jacket and put it, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry for mistreating my clothes. And then, then I start the pitch, you know, which was the, the shortest pitch ever. And, but fortunately, you know, he liked it. So, so what happened is, yeah, so what basically happened is that, hey, he said, hey, can I get your card? Then he called me the day after on Saturday. He said, like, hey, uh, Thor, I really think you got something there. Can, can, you, go to a, can, can you come to a partners meeting uh, next Monday morning with Sequoia and meet all the partners? And that was such a pivotal point for, for our fundraising. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it was borderline stalking, of course. But, uh, <laughs> so we can, also add, we can also add dishonesty and dishevelment <laughs> to the list of things. Yeah, that nobody said it's going to be easy. So be dishonest and be... Do, just dirty, I guess. Just to throw your clothes everywhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. So, to wrapping up, I think what can we do? What can you say right now to help these guys be you in four years, three years, two years? Go for it. Well, <laughs> better make it pivot. Do your stuff. Uh, don't try to replicate at least what you know, I'm doing. Uh, I think <laughs> at this point now, uh, sitting here and claiming success. You know, after our dinner last night, uh, I went back home and the New York office was still, of course, up and running. Mm -hmm. So I was working till 4.30 this morning, uh, sleeping for two hours before taking my kids to their school and showing up here. So probably not the, the typical definition of huge success that everybody should try to follow. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I think, um, um, I think for all of us here that are, I mean, in, at this conference uh, today, we have a lot of the people that will shape the, the startup and entrepreneurial scene in Iceland uh, for the next couple of years at least, uh, which hopefully will be a significant uh, molding time for this industry in Iceland. So I think you know, one of the takeaways uh, from this morning uh, was when one of our speakers were talk was talking about uh, this term, uh, uh, what did he call it? Uh, co-opetition, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so let's compete and let's try to bring all of the ideas forward and let's try to do it, of course, in a race. Uh, but let's stick together and help each other out. Uh, we can, you know, collectively, we, I guess, have a, a stronger network around the world than any one uh, 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 entrepreneur or VC in San Francisco has. Collectively, we could all probably even uh, pull together a network that's stronger than the partners at Sequoia. Uh, let's share ideas, but let's also, you know, and, 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 and help each other build things uh, uh, and, and better things. But also, let's be frank and let's close down a lot of the stuff or be frank about a lot of the stuff that's going on here, too, because I think uh, some of the stuff that's going on in Iceland has, has, is being kept on life support for too long, and it's not making, uh, that's not, you're not making the entrepreneurs any favors. Uh, doing it that way, but you know, let's let's collectively try to build a scene that will uh, that will compete not with Silicon Valley, but that will hopefully at at one point, uh, you know, be in the same category or similar category to the melting pots of New York or Boston or Portland uh, or Denver, uh, and you know, I think we stand a chance of doing it. And should they come directly to you for money? Do you have money? I'll, I have plenty of puffins. Do you have money? Uh, <laughs> puffins to go around. Uh, no, uh, uh, I'm not going to spend my next couple of weeks 
going through those going emails. Through those emails. <laughs> you talk to Einar Gunnar. Yeah, it's a great star. <laughs> he All filters right. things out Thor. effectively. Yeah, uh, I'm just going to keep it short now. Uh, just don't quit. I mean, this, this life of trying to start up a company has its ups and downs. You know, I've had so many you know, huge towns where I'm just about to, to quit, to search the classified for some uh, job vacancies. And, you know, just, it's gonna get hard. But if you really believe this, I know this is the most cliche thing I've ever said in my life, but, but it's <laughs> kind of true though, you know, just keep on. And the rewards, you know, to see, a, you know, value being created, seeing jobs being created, seeing a company being formed that you have like, you know, not not alone, but you have, with other great people created. It's, that's just the best feeling in the world. And even though I have no life, I'm divorced, and I put everything into this thing. You know, it's, 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 it's oh like God. you know, it's, it's kind of kind of worth it, though. <laughs> You're gonna be you'll be no, sad and lonely. You have to give it yeah, all. I mean, that's that's my advice. Okay, give it not, all until no, you. I'm not saying you should get divorced. Though. It's like, <laughs> Can we have two, hurt you, as well. You have Icelandic girls <laughs> everywhere, so <laughs> you're safe. Bala? Yeah, I was just saying I'm single. No, yeah, I'm yeah. joking. <laughs> <laughs> Worst crowd ever, though. <laughs> um, yeah, I think one thing that needs to change here in Iceland that we need to appreciate failures more. Like, Thor has maybe opened up this discussion a little bit. Like, here in Iceland, it's kind of looked down on if you fail, and like everybody talk about it if you fail, and mm -hmm. you feel like everybody's talking about it. Mm -hmm. it especially here in the Nordics, I think this culture exists. Mm -hmm. uh, failure is just kind of a big opportunity for you to learn and get some experience. So that's one thing I really want to that I really want to change here in Iceland. <laughs> but like what I would recommend, we asked all of the people we met with for the documentary this question. And like almost all of them told us, just do it. We actually should be sponsored by Nike because like all of them told us, like just do it. If you want it <laughs> badly enough, you will do it. So yeah. that's my advice. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, because I'm ending this, mm -hmm. I'm going to be really um, Americanized. Okay. Kind of like God bless Iceland, you know. <laughs> Uh, you yeah, want to so sing the hymn or whatever. <laughs> Can we? The hymn? Yeah, so I'm just going to say, you know, kind of like do what you really, really, really want to do. Like kind of follow your heart. Yes, I said it. Uh, because uh, you can't really go wrong with that. And you kind of need that like when things are going really, really bad. It ha like the project you're working on, it has to be like really close to your heart. Uh, kind of like you have to be really, really interested in it because that's like the only thing that's going to keep you going. So, for example, I was talking to a person in, in, in Cologne, Germany, and he was doing like a babysitting website. And always like my, my first question was like, why are you doing this? And he was just like, yeah, it's a great business. But yeah, so you like babysitting, you like children. And I was just like, no, I'm just, doing it because it's okay business, you know? And I was just like, really? Is there like nothing there like about it? Like, why are you, and then I asked like, why are you doing this, but not like maybe something you're interested in? And I was just like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and is there really, have you never thought about this? Uh, so yeah, I think that's like a good end point, but uh, just like kind of follow your heart and <laughs> do what you're like really interested in. All right, guys. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It's a lot of it's, it's interesting for me, and I hope it was interesting for you guys. So let's give these guys a round of applause. Mm -hmm.